Uh, my question for you is, you had the opportunity to serve on the Moon, Mars, and Beyond Commission in 2004. Would you like to care to discuss the uh, recent changes to the nation's space program? Let's start out by asking, what is NASA to us as a nation? What is NASA? If I had a nickel for every time someone said, why are we spending money up there when we have problems down here? And I think about if you're only looking down, one day the asteroid's coming, you know. But I'm just looking down here, I'm fine. It you know, at some point, you gotta look up in the current plan. It promotes the commercial access to low Earth orbit, a couple of hundred miles up where the space station and space shuttle goes. Low Earth orbit is no longer a space frontier. The original Space Act from 1958 says NASA needs to advance a space frontier. Low Earth orbit is to boldly go where hundreds have gone before. It's not a frontier anymore. Move NASA to the next step. What does the program allow? It says we're not going to the moon anymore. Maybe we'll go to Mars one day. I don't know when, but let's work on some technology that might enable that someday. That worries me, because without a plan to go somewhere outside of low Earth orbit, we've got no force operating on the educational pipeline of America. NASA, as best as I can judge, is a force of nature like none other. I have never seen, with all due respect to other federal agencies, I have never seen eighth graders sit up in their chair and say, when I grow up, I want to be an NSF researcher or an NIH researcher, with all due respect to those agencies, they do important scientific work, but they are unknown and invisible at the age where people choose what they want to be when they grow up. And so what worries me is that if you take away the MAN program, a program which if you advance frontiers, you make, heroes are made, okay? There's a force operating on the educational pipeline that will stimulate the formation of scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and technologists, the STEM research fields. You birth these people into society. They're the ones that make tomorrow come. The foundations of economies in this, the 21st century, will issue forth from investments we make in science and technology. That we've known since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, we have known that those nations that embrace those investments are those that lead the world. America is fading right now, fading. By the way, how much does NASA cost? It's a half a penny on a dollar. Did you know that? The people who say, why are we spending money up here? Down? I ask them, how much do you think we're spending? They say five cents, 10 cents on a dollar. It's a half a penny, a half a penny. That buys the space station, the space shuttles, all the NASA centers, the rovers, the Hubble telescope, all the astronauts, all of that. Nobody's dreaming about tomorrow anymore. NASA knows how to dream about tomorrow. If the funding can accommodate it, the funding can empower it, the funding can enable it. Yeah, you need good teachers, no doubt about it, but the teachers come and go, because I go to the next grade. Teachers can help light a flame, but I need something to keep the flame fanned. It's about the effect of NASA on who and what we are as a nation, what we have been as a nation, perhaps for a while there, took it for granted. I see the most powerful particle accelerators in some other country, the fastest trains are built by Germany and are running in China right now. I see our infrastructure collapsing, no one dreaming about tomorrow. And everybody thinks they can put a Band-Aid on one problem or another. The most powerful agency on the dreams of a nation is currently underfunded to do what it needs to be doing. And that's making dreams come true. And at a half a penny on a dollar, how much would you pay for the universe?